my refuge. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty, I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God, in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence, Psalm 91 1-3 ESV. Although Psalm 91 is anonymous, yet the theme and the tone suggest that King David was the author of it, and he wrote it when he felt great comfort in the Lord. The Lord was his hiding place and he is the one who preserved him from great troubles. There are five points emphasized in this psalm. Firstly it is about Lord who is his refuge and his shield. Secondly it is about the comfort he finds in the Lord and says we do not need to be afraid of any adverse situation. Thirdly at the way the Lord sustains us by sending his angels to take charge of us in our dire need of him to rescue from troubles. Fourthly it is about the way that we should seek in times of temptations by the devil. And Fifthly the assurance that the Lord will answer our prayer when we call upon him for help. There is no reason why we cannot call the Lord as our refuge and fortress just as the psalmist claimed him to be so, in the light of the protection we do have in the Lord. It is indeed great to know that we have a place of comfort in heaven, where we live with our Lord Jesus Christ, forever and ever. All those who are saved will be able to say that God is our refuge and our fortress. He who lives in the secret place of the Almighty God shall live under his shadow. Thou art my hiding place, thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance, Psalms 32 7. We trust God, who delivers us from the traps set by Satan, our enemy. The traps of the devil are similar to the snare of the fowler, who sets for the birds to get trapped. The Lord delivers us from such traps, and the noisome pestilence. We trust him because he is faithful, and trustworthy, and he covers us with his feathers under his wings. The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand, Psalms 121:5. Isaiah recalls how the Lord destroyed terrible nations like Assyria and Babylon, which persecuted the children of Israel. The Lord dealt with the enemies of the children of Israel in the past, and will deal with them in future as well. The Lord raised Pharaoh in the past to show his strength and delivered the children of Israel from the bondage of slavery in Egypt and drowned Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea. Sennacherib, king of Assyria went against Hezekiah the king of Judah threatening that he will destroy the city of Jerusalem but the Lord heard the prayer of Hezekiah and dealt harshly with Sennacherib. King Hezekiah's prayer was not just formal one, but he rent his clothes, covered himself in sackcloth and went to the Lord for help. King Hezekiah's prayer was answered by God and the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians an hundred fourscore and five thousand, and when they rose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. 1 Kings 19.35 Sennacherib king of Assyria, went back and lived in Nineveh and worshipped his god, Nisroch and he was killed by his own two sons. Reference 2 Kings 1936-37 The Lord's dealings are marvelous. Hezekiah was a man as a hiding place from the wind and a covert from the tempest as rivers of water in dry place, and as the shadow of a great rock, in a weary land, just as Lord Jesus Christ would in his millennial kingdom on the earth in future. Refer Isaiah 32-2, Isaiah 2-10-22, Revelation 1911-21. Terrible King Nebuchadnezzar King of Babylon was made to lose his sanity and live like an animal for seven years, he regained his sanity when he honored God. He will utterly destroy Babylon from the face of the earth in future. Revelation 18 2. The Lord has been strength to the poor, strength to the needy in his distress, refuge from the storm and shadow from the heat. Cf. Isaiah 25 4. David felt the comfort of God in all situations and more so in the presence of his enemies and that is the reason why I wrote. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23 5-6 ESV Our common enemy is Satan and we have to guard ourselves against his wiles. Apostle Paul advises in Ephesians 6 11-13 to put on the armor of God in order that we may be able to stand against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We will neither be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day and we do not fear the pestilences that walk in darkness or destruction that wastes at noon. We will see the judgment the wicked receives at the hands of God the Almighty. The Lord's truth shall prevail forever and he is our shield and buckler. It is because we have the Lord Almighty as our refuge and our habitation, no evil will ever befall us, or will any plague ever come near us. The Lord will give charge to his angels to keep us in all our ways. They will bear us up in their hands when we by accidentally fall and they will make sure that our feet do not dash against stone nor will it hurt us. Quoting Psalm 91 11-12 The devil tempted and challenged Lord Jesus Christ that if he was the Son of God, he may cast down himself from high place, because as it is written the angels would take charge of him, and bear him up at his feet. 
he would not dash against a stone. However, the Lord quoted Deuteronomy 6, 16 and said that he should not tempt the Lord God as the children of Israel tempted him in Massah. And saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, Matthew 4 6-7. It is because the Lord is on our side the lion and the adder can be trampled upon by our feet. It is because we set our love upon him, the Lord will answer us and be with us in our trouble. The Lord satisfies us with long life grants us his salvation. These verses, however, are not intended for private interpretation and challenge God to prove them. If we resort to test God to prove these verses, we may fail to see the intended results, for God is not our behest to act according to our will, but we are his will to do his will. If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servant be, if any man serve me, him will my father honor, John 12 26.